Yes, toddlers do get jealous of the new baby. Here's how to help. Welcome to Empower Kids TV. This is Village Talk. You're here because you know that every family has the potential to be great and you're willing to push your mindset so that you can create the family of your dreams. Today on Village Talk, we're really excited because we've got Sue DeCaro with us. Welcome, Sue. Thank you. I'm excited to be here. I just want to tell our villagers a little bit about you, Sue, before we get into today's question. So Sue is a certified parent coach and an educator focused on conscious living and loving. She is a public speaker, writer, trainer, and co-founder of Building Connected Communities. Along with her extensive training, Sue was able to take the challenges she experienced years ago raising her own two daughters to help her transform relationships between parents and children in her coaching practice worldwide. As founder of Dicaro Parent Coaching, a private practice supporting parents worldwide, Sue integrates education, consciousness and coaching to help families grow and thrive. Sue's training as a parent coach combined with experiences with her own family enables her to support every client with empathy and to craft tailored approach to achieve their specific goals. You can find out more about Sue at DeCaroParentCoaching.com and I'll put a link down below for everyone. Make sure to check Sue out and you'll find out why when we get into today's question. All right, Sue. So today's question comes from Ruth. And I'll just read her question for you. I have recently had a baby and have an 18-month-old. My 18-month-old sometimes slaps her brother and me when I'm doing stuff for the baby. I am assuming it's jealousy. I try so hard to get her involved with everything I'm doing with, with her sister. And she has a baby doll that we look after together. When she does slap, I put her in time out and tell her, no but she thinks it's a game and laughs and will happily take herself to time out. She isn't like it all the time. She will sometimes cuddle and kiss her younger, her younger sibling, but then sometimes out of nowhere, she'll hit. I know she doesn't understand that it hurts, but I just don't know what else I can do to prevent it from happening. Any help? That's a good one. Really Ruth, good one. What a, what a fabulous question, Ruth. Yeah. And first of all, I'd love to say that you're not alone. This is not an uncommon situation at the age and stage of your child is. If your child was 14, we might say that's Something a little different. uncommon. Yes. But certainly a very common situation and has nothing to do with your, your parenting necessarily. It really has to do with the needs of your child. And so I think one of the things that first comes to mind is that separating your child in a timeout may actually be a process that creates more separation mm -hmm. for your child. Um, children, when there's a sibling born and you know, a baby that needs attention, often do feel, feel jealous. You're right on the mark with that. That's, you know, again, another common thing that we can assume happens with our children because for so long, they're the only one, and now they have to share the attention with somebody else. And so one of the things I highly recommend is as you continue to bring your 18 month old into the picture to help you, when she hits, perhaps holding her hand in a gentle way and sharing with her that we don't hit, I'm not gonna let you hit, I'll hold your hand to help you from moving it in that direction yeah. so you know kind of reframing her ability to hit in a gentle way can help her to learn and understand through the process that this is not something we do we don't hurt mm -hmm. other people i'm not going to allow you to hurt me or to hurt the baby so i'll hold your hand to help you it doesn't separate the child mm -hmm. right nicole i'm sure you would agree i, I i'm loving it and i think there are a couple of things you said there that really resonates for me. First of all, there is that sense of jealousy. And I remember my kids were, my kids are close in age. And I remember when, when my second son came along, I thought my first son was too young to experience the emotion of jealousy. And so the first time he lashed out, it just took me by surprise because I didn't expect it. Um, and a lot of work into sibling rivalry, what I found is it's really just that, that fear that I'm going to lose my mommy. 
somebody's coming to take my mummy away. I'm going to lose my attention and my love. And if we could really focus on it like that, I think we, we bring a different presence. And, and to go back to your comments about time out, it does just really fuel that fear. Because now if I've put you in time out when you're afraid you're going to lose me, now you can see, yes, see, this this baby's got mommy and I'm just sitting here in time out. So exactly. I, I absolutely agree with what you've said. I, and I think the, the other thing is, and I experienced this as when my kids were very young because there was a lot of sibling rivalry between my two girls, was that their cups just need to always be full. Hmm. Yes. that love cup yes. our cups need to be full too but yes. it's even that much more important for a younger child or any child to be recognized in in that need for love so as we look at our children throughout the day throughout the week throughout the year making sure that we actually attend to what serves them in filling their cup up mm. what type of love what do they react to what love language i love the book the five love languages yes. because when we know what the top languages of our children we're able to fill their bucket up in a way that actually serves them mm. and some kids it's you know the touch the physical touch other children it's you know acts of service or kindness so we really have to learn about the child in front of us and what fuels them and fills them up especially in times where you know these types of activities come up and a child might appear to be jealous and I love that. I think what one of the things that I recommend to parents when they're in this in this stage um, is to potentially try um, more one on one time. And sometimes it can feel difficult when you do have a newborn. But the advantage is that newborn will take a nap. So what, what I did was craft nap time, even if it was just 10 to 15 minutes, into some serious, dedicated, one-on-one -on -one attention. Phones away, just you've got all my attention. What do you want to play? And I made it really directed by the child and just gave them all of my attention. And I think when, when I did that and I connected rather than disconnected, I saw a difference. I saw that fear level of I'm losing my mummy kind of kind of dissipate. Would you agree with that, Sue? I, I agree completely. And 15 minutes is just such a beautiful amount of time. Yes because many parents say, I don't have that time. kind of time. Yeah. So if you can carve out, like you said, 15 minutes, it really can fuel your child if you climb into their world. Yeah. I love the fact that you said non-distracted, yes. basically, yes. The technology. <laughs> because sitting with our phones is not actually climbing no. into our child's world, no. but leaving everything behind and being present in that moment and allowing the child to lead us, even if they're playing a game completely differently than the, the rules of the game yes. just follow their lead be part of their world whatever that world looks like for them that's absolutely true is there anything else you think we can help ruth with and especially let's go back i think um to the fact that there is hitting and i know you mentioned hold her hand in a very gentle way and say i won't allow you to do that is there any conversation? She's 18 months, so she's not she's not very old in terms of being able to understand some language. What else can we do to really support this mom around the, the distraction from hitting? I think separate from uh, the time when they're all together. So, for example, when the mother is climbing into the child's play area and really connecting that 15 minutes, even though the child is only 18 months, Children are brilliant. I believe at 18 months, we can still learn from this beautiful child. And so I would in a very carefully constructed way, ask the child, something that an 18 month old might understand, if there's something she could do other than hit. Mm. You know, when you're sitting on mommy's lap and mommy's feeding the baby or mommy's changing the baby and, and you would like my attention because we know that's the elephant in the room you want to be part of it or you feel maybe you know some fear that you know mommy's doing something separate from me what else can we do how can i help you mm. you know could i hold your hand could we sing a song so at 18 months we have to feed a few things perhaps yes. to get the child started yeah. but they are certainly capable of helping us to help them yeah and that's the key we need their help all of our children we need their help in terms of what we can do to best help them. 
I love that. Um, I think when anything we can do from the youngest age possible to start to empower our kids, to make them part of the solutions that we're finding for everyday challenges, just really sets up our relationship for a very long time to be one of teamwork. So I really love that we're bringing, bringing the child into the solution. For, for these, we're all about action. So I'm going to try to recap some of the tips we've given for Ruth so that she can take those away. So the first thing was really, rather than disconnecting by putting the child in the naughty corner, turn towards connecting more and spending more time together. Redirect her, her lashing and her slapping with, in a very gentle way um, and, and show her that you're really protecting her and the baby from being hurt but by using by using that that sort of aggression fill the love cup i love that one fill the love cup get some one-on-one -on -one time in and make sure it's not distraction time it's it's 100 percent focused um all of you in that time and the last one which i absolutely love sue was bring the child into the conversation Allow your child to be part of the solution that you're creating. Ask her, what else can we do? Because when you have that sort of buy-in, that goes a long way to making sure that is a successful solution. So I absolutely love that. Is there anything else you'd like to add for Ruth, Sue? I think, Ruth, be gentle with yourself. Mm. Gentle with yourself because parenting is one of the hardest jobs there is. And I think it's important that we, we are compassionate with ourselves every day. I absolutely so love that. That would be my last tip. I absolutely I know it's love hard, that. <laughs> but take good care of yourself. I absolutely love that. Thank you so much for joining us today, Sue. And I'd like my to pleasure. tell everyone, be sure to check Sue's website. It's the Caro Parenting the caro parent coaching.com there'll be a link down below be sure to dive in deeply into sue's work because you'll find amazing resources for parents thank you for joining us for this episode we're all about sharing and support in this village so if you found value in this episode be sure to share it with your family and friends and remember this is a weekly show so if you haven't already subscribe and hit that bell icon so that you'll be notified of our next episode as we always say in the village, you're just one connection away. With love and gratitude, empower us. Until next time.